Hello everyone. Hope that you all are doing good. So today we will learn how to run our Spring Boot application on different databases. So we will be running our same uh, Spring, Spring Boot application without changing any co Java code in our application. We will be switching between three different databases. Right. But before jumping into the video, I will request you that if you find my videos knowledgeable, if you gain some knowledge out of my videos, do like, share and comment on the videos. And if new to the channel, please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon. So now directly let's jump to the code part. Let me take you to the ID and let me go to the structure of the project. So we have uh, our structure of the project like this. So we have our main class, then we have our controllers then our model class and then repositories right so this is my main class right so this is my main class right and then we have our uh, model class right i have a model of item right wherein i have taken an id name of the item and the price of the item right we have some getters and setters in this class and then i have made a repository by extending it to jpa repository right so we'll have some predefined methods to use while we are saving, retrieving data from uh, the database, right? And let's let us take, let me take you to the controller. So this is my rest controller, wherein I have one call of save and one call of get, right? Save is uh, saving the data to the database and get is fetching the data from the database, right? So uh, the code looks uh, the code looks very simple, right? We have our uh, repositories and simply we are calling the save method and the find all method from our repositories, right? So now this was the Java code part, right? It is a simple application wherein I'll be using Postman to save the data and to fetch the data, right? So uh, let me take you to the uh, pom.xml as well. So as I said that uh, we'll be switching between databases. So the different databases that we will be working on would be S2 database, MySQL database and Postgres database. So right now what I'll do is I'll uncomment these and I'll be working first on MySQL database. So let me comment Postgres and let me comment S2 database. So let's first work on MySQL database. For my, uh, working on MySQL database, you need a connector dependency of MySQL in your uh, pom.xml. So this is my MySQL connector dependency that we need in our pom.xml and then we have our JPA dependency in the pom.xml as we'll be uh, saving retrieving data in a JPA way, right? We'll be using the JPA repository interface, right? And then we have our Spring Boot starter web dependency, right? So these are the basic dependencies that requ we require to uh, work on this project, right? So now uh, the main part comes in when we when we say that we want to switch between database, right? And we are saying that we will not change any code part in our uh, Java files. So the switching between the databases will be done where we'll be configuring the database, right? So we configure database in application dot properties. So as discussed that we will be first working on MySQL database, right? So I need to have the properties of MySQL database. So these are some properties that we need to put in application.properties file to configure MySQL database. So we have done the changes in the pom.xml that we have enabled the MySQL connector dependency in pom.xml and we have to put these properties in our uh, prop application.properties file and no change in the Java code, right? So we have already defined that we have a controller, our main class and an item object would be there and then we have our repositories, right? So uh, there is no change in the uh, Java code, just we have to configure these properties, right? The application now, right? So let me run the application. But before uh, starting your application, just check that, okay, you have a database of DB switch or not in your uh, MySQL. So there should be a schema defined already for DB switch, right? ID and let me check that okay server is starting or not. So the server has started, right? So let's go to Postman. We'll go to the Postman and we'll hit the save call. Save call for uh, let's say AirPods. AirPods, right? So the price is two thousand. Let me send this call. 
right so we have the item saved so let me get this call now right so let me hit the get call so if the item is being saved in the database then only we will be able to fetch the data so let's see how many items are being saved in the database so we are getting it and we have got one item as fan the price is 2000 and another item that we saved was airports and the price is 2000 right so this is how you will be working on mysql database just that you have to define the properties and you have you should have the uh, connector dependency of mysql database in your pom.xml right the java code is more likely the same uh, that we uh, did in the previous videos as well right where we have talked about how the connections with the database has been made and how we can run the crud applications or crud operations on our database right so now let's switch to another database that is postgres database right so now there uh, to switch to postgres database first thing that you have to do is you have to go into your pom.xml and you should have the dependency of postgres database so let me comment the mysql database dependency and let me enable the postgres sql dependency right so i have this postgres sql dependency here so let me uncomment it and then you have to change the properties according to postgres database so these are the properties uh, of postgres database right so you should have a schema of db switch in your uh, postgres database then you should have you your username and password is there and then the dialect is there first first uh, it was of mysql now it is of postgres right so let's go to the postgres right this is my schema of db switch and i have the tables right here right so let's uh, run the application now right so let me close the application i have already made the schema right so i have already made the schema so our application has started now started on postgres database so let's uh, see that our table is there or not so we have one table of items right there so now let's go to the postman and let's hit the save call first right so let me save as uh, save data as airports right airports and uh, the price is 2000 right the same entry so let me hit the send and so the, it says that item is being saved so now item is being saved then there should be uh, when we'll uh, go when we'll uh, hit the fetch request then they should it should return the objects right it should return our items as well so we have two items here fan with price 2000 and airports with uh, price 2000 right so this is how you work on postgres database so these are the properties that you need to configure for your postgres database and you should have a postgres dependency in your pom.xml right no change in the java code till now i haven't changed the java code uh, the java code that we discussed previously it's not being changed right so i have switched from mysql database to postgres database now we have to switch from postgres database to s2 database so what we'll do is we'll comment the postgres dependency and we'll enable the s2 database dependency right so we need to have some properties for s2 database dependency right so i'll not uh, discuss this in depth i've already done a, a, a separate video on s2 database uh, separately and i'll put that link in the description if you want to learn in depth that how to work with h2 database how to configure h2 database then you can go and check those check that video i'll put that link in the description so these are the properties that we require for h2 database right so we have our username password the url and everything right so now let me close the application now our application has started now let me go to the browser first so now we are on our browser so uh, let's go to the console of s2 database so we need to go on localhost 8080 and then s2 console so let us input the password here right let me input the password and let me connect it so let me connect so now uh, the s2 database console is being connected right so we have the table as items right so we have this entry here so now let's go to the postman and let's hit the save 
save call first and the save call is airports and the price is 2000 let me save it right so it says the items has been saved and let me get the data now so let me fetch the data so yes it has returned me the data right the uh, name is airports price is 2000 and the id is 1 so now let me go to the console as well and let me type in select star statement right so let me select and let me run it so you can see that we have the entry of airports right so this is how you can actually switch between different databases without changing the code and that's the beauty of using hibernate right so uh, spring is uh, by default configured with hibernate right so we don't need to change the code uh, it is not uh, the code is not dependent on what database you are using right so it is independently working code is independently working just that you you need to configure it that on which database you need to work right and that you can do by simply adding the dependency in your pom.xml and adding some properties to configure the database in your application dot properties right so we have covered today that uh, how you can switch from mysql to postgres to s2 database right so this was it from this video hope that you people like share and comment on the video and if new to the channel please subscribe and press the bell icon hope to see you in the next video till then happy learning